Right out of high school, 74. My parents thought I was gonna commute, and at 17 I decided I'd have my own apartment, so I was lived off of Park Avenue, had a bicycle, and the bus system, and that's how I got back and forth to school. Uh, majored in early childhood education. Um, I enjoyed children, and I just thought, well, this is a great career to get into. That's when daycares were just kind of the buzzword back then, and I wanted to, to be a part of little kids' lives. It was a lot smaller then, <laughs> but there was such a, a place of support among the professors. I know I was, I was 17, very naive. Uh, we're talking the 70s women's live movement, all this <laughs> flower power happening. And so I was working here on campus. I had a job. I was burning the can on both ends. And I had staff, I Miss Gretchen there. Um, in the early childhood department was just very supportive of me. I was, my grades were beginning to fail and she just took me aside and said, what's going on? You know, how can you become successful? Do you realize this is what's happening? You're, you, you're exhibiting extreme tiredness and you need to, you know, what can we do to help fashion this and, and divert it, support? That helped me kind of become uh, independent. To see that there's so many technical uh, skills that are being trained now as well in the program is just amazing because not everybody's going to go those four years. I didn't think I wanted to. I did eventually, but I thought I only wanted to do a short stint, I guess. But uh, it inspired me to go on. And so I'm hoping that same inspiration here is for those students as well, that they can go on and achieve. And um, you just don't know what life is going to bring you, what journey you're going to have. When our daughter was born uh, 20 years ago with Down syndrome, um, I realized there was so much I didn't understand about a, having a child with Down syndrome. And I didn't know where to find all the information. I didn't know all that I didn't know. So I started an organization when my daughter was about three called Hidden Miracles Parent Network that basically was designed to help inform parents without overwhelming them brief information on what types of therapies might benefit their children, um, a new parent packet that would at least have some websites for families to go to to learn about different therapies, different nutritions, a network for families to have a place to turn. We have a website as well, hiddenmiracles.org. Sharing our life experiences, we find that niche that we can grab hold of that, oh, this is going to work, I'm going to be okay, and my family's going to be okay. I embrace it because uh, there's a scripture that talks about how we're to speak up for those who can't speak up for themselves, that we're to be the ones to help the needy, those who can't speak up for themselves. We need to be their voice. And so I wanted to be a voice for families of children with Down syndrome. I wanted to be that voice to say, it's going to be okay, and you can raise this child. And these children have value, they have dignity. They have worth and they have a place in this world and we cannot be a world without them. To think that my daughter who nominated me considered me a part of that, that I have somehow made an impact. Could sick of and help me find that place for myself, that I had a voice.